Welcome back. 2022 was quite a year for animation. DreamWorks making a comeback, Pixar returning to theaters, a 2D animated film released in theaters, stuff on streaming, and spectacular stop motion. I saw a total of 37 animated movies released in 2022, and now I will be talking about them here. But there are a few things I'd like to say before going in. You are not going to see Marmaduke, Adventures of Buckwild, or the Polly Shore Pinocchio here, as I didn't see them. Also, for this list, I will be including live-action animation hybrids, and if I'm brief with some of these, it's because I already talked about some of them in previous videos. Lastly, this list is just a subjective ranking. With that being said, on to the list. Number 37. Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Roger Cruels. Well, there were a few jokes that got a chuckle out of me, and it was nice to hear Ed Asner as Grandpa Heffley, considering it was his final role. This film was just underwhelming. Roderick Rules 2022 cut out a lot of key scenes from the book and really watered things down. Not to mention the animation was really stiff and some of the voice acting was off. Number 36. Night at the Museum, Komen Ra Rises Again. As a fan of the original Night at the Museum trilogy, I felt disappointed after I finished watching this film. Well, the characters and background designs are well done, everything else, not so much. This film was just bad joke after bad joke, and it lacked the charm of what made the original trilogy special. Number 35. Hotel Transylvania Transfermania. While there were some funny and heartwarming moments, this film didn't match the quality as the last three. It ended the series on a low note. Also, I could have been better off with some of the visuals. Number 34, Pause of Fury, The Legend of Hank. This film was a mixed bag for me. On one hand, I could have been better off with some of the humor, but on the other hand, it was cute and some jokes did actually land. Plus, there were also some fun sequences. Now I heard people compare this to Blazing Saddles, but I can't say because I haven't seen Blazing Saddles as of this video being uploaded. Number 33, Strange World. I found this film disappointing, and it's a shame, as I like those Lost World-type movies. But that's not to say I thought it was terrible. Just average. Well, the characters weren't exactly the best, the animation was outstanding. Plus, the twist was cool, I guess. Number 32. Chippendale Rescue Rangers. While well, I had a blast with this film after I saw it, I found myself changing my rating. I don't think it's terrible. Not at all. There is a lot I genuinely like. I like how the film merges all kinds of different media together, but when I thought back, the only jokes I could remember were the ones with Seth Rogen's character. This scene still cracks me up. What are you looking at? Honestly, your weird dead eyes. <laughs> they are weird. <laughs> Super weird. <laughs> so funny. But the biggest turnoff for me was when I looked more into the Peter Pan thing and how it was in really poor taste regarding to what happened to his original voice actor, Bobby Driscoll. With that being said, I'm aware many of my friends like this film. I'm not trying to get them to hate it. You can like something while also critiquing it for being problematic. Number 31, Disenchanted. Well, there are some things I liked about this movie, such as Amy Adams' dual performance as Giselle and an evil stepmother, and Maya Rudolph made a great evil queen. But the more I thought about this film, after watching it, I found myself liking it less. The film had too many ideas shoved in, and at times felt like exactly what the original was making fun of. Number 30. Green Lantern, Beware My Power. While well, I applaud this film for going into Jon Stewart's PTSD and pushing the limit of PG-13, this film was way too dark for its own good and moved at an unengaging pace but it was better than the Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern. Next! Number 29, Lightyear. I was disappointed by this film. I will say the animation was gorgeous and the soundtrack by Michael Giacchino was great. Plus, I liked Chris Evans' take on the iconic character, as it was his own thing while still being the one Tim Allen brought to life. But I felt this film had too many ideas and at times was joke overload. Number 28, My Father's Dragon. Based on the book of the same name by Ruth Stiles Gennett, who, fun fact, as of this video being uploaded, is still alive at the age of 99, I found this film okay. 
The animation was outstanding, for sure. Personally, I prefer the book. Number 27, Bob's Burgers the Movie. Now, I'm not at all familiar with the show Bob's Burgers, but I went and saw it because 2D theatrical movies are rare these days. So I showed my support. I enjoyed it for the most part. The animation was nice and the voice acting was solid. Plus, a lot of jokes were landed and the film was heartwarming. I had some issues, but they could just be because I'm not at all familiar with the show. But with that being said, I'm glad to see fans of the show enjoying it more than me. Number 26. Constantine, The House of Mystery. This is really an anthology film of different stories based on DC Comics. Each story is unique and entertaining. That's all. Number 25. Minions, The Rise of Gru. This film is alright. I was ready to go in as the minions are easy to mess up, but this film had them bounced out with Gru. At the end of the day, this film was harmless fun. Number 24. Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the movie. Now, I'm not familiar with the Rise series, as I was burned out from TMNT after the 2012 series ended. The animation was good, and I applaud this film for not being afraid to get dark and disturbing. Number 23, DC League of Super Pets. I was pleasantly surprised by this film. A lot of jokes landed, and the voice acting was solid. Plus, the film was heartwarming and cute. Number 22, Bubble. Not to be confused with THE Bubble. Don't watch that film, by the way. This anime was beautiful, and the setting was unique. I just wish the film committed fully because the elements were there for it to be something special. But overall, an okay film. Number 21, Drifting Home. This film was not half bad. The cast were enduring and felt human. Plus, it was emotional. Sure, it was a little longer than it really needed to be, but it was better than the other movie I saw that involved the cast stranded in a building in the ocean. Ugh. Number 20, The Deer King. Sure, this film was a bit predictable and it wasn't the most original story, but honestly, I thought it was all right. Plus, I'm a sucker for emotional movies, so there. Number 19, Catwoman Hunted. This film was fun. It was action-packed and had the flair of an anime. Plus, Elizabeth Giles and Stephanie Beatrice were great as Catwoman and Batwoman, respectively. Number 18, Batman and Superman, Battle of the Super Sons. This film was a pleasant surprise. The animation had a unique look, and putting the spotlight on Damon and John worked well, as I really liked their dynamic. Also, it was nice to see Lois Lane be a badass for a change. Number 17, Luck. I actually liked this film. Sure, it had world-building issues, but for the most part, I enjoyed it. I could resonate with the lead Sam and liked its message. Plus, the animation was outstanding. Number 16, One Piece Film Red. This was a great introduction to the One Piece series for me. The animation was gorgeous, and the soundtrack was awesome. I may have a long way to go, but I'll check out more One Piece. Number 15, Dragon Ball Super Superhero. Ha! Remember to say the extra super there. Anyway, I had a good time with this film. The animation was solid and the action scenes were incredible. Number 14, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. This was an improvement over the first film. Knuckles and Tails were a great addition, and I liked that the human cast actually contributed more to the movie. Yeah, I was not too bothered by the wedding scene. <laughs> Plus, Jim Carrey got to crank it up even more as Dr. Robotnik. Number 13, Lyle Lyle Crocodile. I gave this movie a chance because I loved the book by Bernard Wobber as a kid. I'm glad to say I had a blast. This movie was hilarious, heartwarming, and emotional. Not to mention it seemed like the cast were having a lot of fun too. Number 12, Trick or Treat Scooby-Doo. This is one of the best more recent Scooby-Doo movies. The film acts as a direct sequel to the original series and has the charm and camp of it too. And plus, it was nice to finally see Velma depicted as queer. Number 11, Apollo 10 and a Half, A Space Age Childhood. I didn't grow up in the 60s, but this made me nostalgic for that era. The 60s aesthetic was captured very well, and the animation was just well done. Yet another great collaboration of Richard Linklater and Jack Black. Number 10, The House. Not that one, this one. Halloween came early in 2022 with this creepy yet charming 
anthology film, each story was unique and provided great commentary. Not to mention it was surprisingly funny. Number 9. Mad God. An animated horror movie made by stop-motion legend Phil Tibbet. What more could one ask for? This film is definitely a watch for anyone into horror or stop-motion. I wouldn't say much else because this is a film you just have to see to believe. Number 8. Wendell and Wild. Who would have thought Keen Peel teaming up with Henry Selleck would make such an awesome movie? The film was creepy, hilarious, and I could resonate with the lead. Plus, the message about dealing with your demons was great. And boy, that stop motion was really impressive. Welcome back to the world of stop motion, Henry Selleck. Number 7. The Sea Beast. Basically, Pirates of the Caribbean meets Moana and How to Train Your Dragon with a bit of kaiju mixed in. And it was awesome! Plus, it was cool seeing a multicultural fantasy world, and the details in this animation was just incredible. Especially with the hair. Also, I applaud this film for tackling the themes of revisionist history. Number 6. The Bad Guys. DreamWorks made quite a comeback in 2022. First with this film, and then later Puss in Boots 2. More on that film later. Anyway, this film was a great tribute to crime movies, and was not only hilarious, but the subversions of expectations and twists were brilliant. I also like the message of always being able to improve upon yourself. Number 5. Intergalactic. Acting as a visual companion piece to Kid Cudi's album of the same name, this film had a lot of effort put into it and wasn't just made to cash in off a popular album. The film was a romantic comedy with gorgeous animation, and while it was more for mature audiences, it wasn't just for the sake of it. Number 4. Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. If Everything Everywhere All at Once was A24's best live action film of 2022, Marcel the Shell with Shoes On was their best animated film of 2022. This film was just charming, cute, and emotional. Not to mention the voice acting and stop motion animation was outstanding. Number 3. Turning Red. This film was hilarious, charming, and emotional. Not to mention it was nice to have a film that tackles puberty in a well-done and tasteful manner that isn't icky or condescending. Number 2. Gamilo del Toro's Pinocchio. What can I say? This film is just a stop-motion masterpiece, and a great new rendition of a classic tale. I'm so happy that this film finally got released, and made by someone who adores the medium and understands it's for everyone. Number 1. Puss in Boots The Last Wish. This was the perfect animated movie to end the year. It is easily DreamWorks' best movie in quite some time, and I dare say it surpasses Shrek 2. The film had the char of the first two Shrek movies, and Forever After, we don't talk about the third film, and was just awesome. The animation was amazing, and the film was action-packed and hilarious. I couldn't think of a better film taking the top spot. Whew! So that's my ranking of the anime movies I've seen in 2022. What's yours? Feel free to share it with me in the comments. Next time, I will be going back to the top 10s with the top 10 underrated movies of 2022. Till then! Bye! Thank you so much for watching. Like this video if you really enjoyed it, share it, and subscribe.